Hey, it's time for VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk. Number 93, I believe. Indeed it is. Number 90. Look, there it is, 93. Woohoo! Motion graphics. Oh, we got lots of cool stuff to talk about tonight because I know, George, you've been like collecting things all week oh, long. I can talk as long as you'll let me. Oh, okay. You just pull the string. Okay. It's been extended. Ah, okay. I mean, stuff <laughs> like <laughs> headphones and <laughs> travel mics and all sorts audio of stuff. Interface. There's always a new audio interface to talk about. Right. And then I'm going to go with what I think you should buy in 2023. Okay, go, you can, you can t completely ignore every, all that crap I mentioned and tell people what they really need to buy. All right. It's time for VoiceOver Body Shop. Tech Talk. You want to listen because we got lots of cool stuff for you to start off 2023 right now. Tech Talk. Brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, the home of Harlan Hogan's signature products. Source Elements, the makers of Source Connect. VoiceOver Heroes, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your voice actor website doesn't have to be a pain in the butt. VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for voiceover success. And World Voices, the industry association of freelance voice talent. And now, here's your hosts, Dan and George. Well, hello there. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop. Or V-O-B-S. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. There he is. He's doing it live in the flesh. Tech Talk. Okay, good. All right. So, anyway. If you've got a question about your home voiceover studio, what any, if any piece of technology, maybe some software issue you ha you're having, or you want to ask us, how do you design something like this? Or what's this voiceover stuff all about? <laughs> or why does George hate Apogee? Why does George hate Apogee? Yeah, that's okay. all these questions and more are going to be answered tonight. All right. So if you've got a question, throw it in the chat room. We also have some other people waiting by live who are going to have questions for us. Right. All of you shake your heads if you're going to be asking. Uh, OK, good. That's what I want to see. <laughs> um, so uh, stay tuned for that. We'll get to the, some of those questions in a little bit. Uh, but it's 2023. That's right. Offic officially, if you're watching this in time shifted mode, it it's is not 20 2022 anymore. Hope yours is off to a great start. That's right. So uh, why don't we just get right into your tech update and you can get into it and then I'll have time to refute it all. <laughs> Sounds good to me. <laughs> okay, go for it. Sounds good to me, everybody. Um, yeah. So what is new? So happy, of course, happy new year, everyone. Lovely to have you back watching the show. Um, my new headphones for 2023, I realized it's kind of a thing now to have a new pair of headphones basically every year. Um, so the ones I'm, I'm, I got myself for Christmas this year um, are the One More brand headphones. Brand. One More. Right there. Um, these are called the Sono Flows. And a little bit more about them. By the way, um, I'm mentioning headphones that you can't buy because they are currently out of stock. So maybe this isn't very fair of me to, uh, to talk about headphones you can't actually buy. But anyway, these is them. Um, and uh, they are what makes them cool. Anyway, I paid about 80 bucks for these and they are Bluetooth, they are noise canceling and they have excep exceptionally good noise canceling. They have really, really soft ear cups, that really, really soft, cushy, pillowy ear cup that you like to see nowadays. Um, and they're double as wired headphones, which if you're going to buy Bluetooth headphones that you want to throw in your bag and have them act double duty as being on the plane headphones and working while you're remote, you want to have a headphone with a head wired, a wire capability like these do, right? These can be plugged in. Big fan. I've, I've been loving the way they sound. Um, they sound natural. They don't sound overly hyped. But if you do like hyped sound, they have an app that comes with them. And so when you're using them on your mobile phone with Bluetooth, 
you can add bass or treble and kind of pump up the sound to get a little bit more of a hyped sound. So anyway. If you have to. If you have to. I found when they were brand new out of the box, the low end, the bass was a little anemic. Um, it might be needing to be broken in a little bit. That's possible because bass actually is a physical moving diaphragm and it can be a little tight when they're brand new. So I just pumped up the bass using the deep sound preset and that gave me the little extra something I was looking for. So anyway, again, those processing settings only work in Bluetooth. When you're plugged in, they're not going to be doing anything uh, like that to your audio. So don't worry about them filtering what you don't want it to filter. Uh, moving on, um, I'm going to move into Ranticlaws mode now. Dun, 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 yes, dun, I know. Dun, We're, dun, it's a little dun, late for dun, that. Dun. You know, we know it's 2023, but this is time shifting. And what am I going to tell you? Anyway, Ranticlaws. Why do the audio processing presets that come with many softwares like Adobe Audition, um, Audacity doesn't really have any really to speak of. Um, what else? Reaper. Most of the built-in audio presets stink. <laughs> they stink. Like if you plug in one of those presets that has anything having to do with voiceover in it, such as announcer, I think that's one of them, or anything voiceover, they are usually terrible. And my theory on that is, is that they are not made by voiceover engineers. They're just made by generic audio engineers that work for the companies that have played around with some stuff and think this stuff sounds kind of cool. And they don't realize that it's overcooked. It's almost always overly bright, overly bassy, overly compressed, what everything is overcooked. And I also think it might be because they think that the people using it won't hear the processing so they overdo it right and i find i'll mention a microphone later that has built-in processing that has the same issue you turn on the settings and a lot of it is overdone and um you know so i think there's a long way to go in terms of presets that are actually useful and i'm hoping that's going to be a change for 2023 but um yeah man most of the time the included processing presets are pretty bad so i would not go with those if you're looking at anything with the words voiceover in it, they're usually off the mark. It, um, it, it does depend on the platform. I mean, have some you found of my any life. that are good? What? Have oh. you found like a preset that's any good or uh, gets there, a good there, sound? There's a couple in an Adobe Audition that I like. Are know. they in the rack area or are they a favorite? Where would you find the best presets? I would find them, well, they're in both. They're in favorites because yeah. normalize is there. And, yeah. yeah. Because so many people send me stuff in two track, got to turn it down to mono. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's in a favorite. But no, when it comes to, uh, say, compression and things like that, yeah. I had there's a preset that I like to use when I use compression. What's it called? Do you remember? Uh, broadcast compression. Is that, in the, is that in a rack or is that in an individual that's plugin? An, that's an individual preset. For which plugin? Do you remember? For, for compression. Oh, for the compressor tool? Yeah, yeah. Cool. There you go. You found one that's good. It's, well, it's a, it's a, uh, a multi... Uh, multi-spectrum uh, compressor oh the multi-band multi-band right so. okay so that's a that's an example of a plug-in that isn't overcooked no not, like not over over the top no yeah you, you throw that on and it's like okay you're supposed to sound like you're on the radio yeah that will do it cool there but, you go i'm glad yeah. you found one that's useful yeah yeah because so many of them are just like what were they yeah. thinking the, the one that says voiceover don't use that <laughs> that's oh boy not not good all right one to try there's one to try that's, I mean, also the plugins that come that are the plugins that are multi band, like multi band compressor, are by far the most complex to actually set up. So, if you can find a preset that's actually useful to help you get started and give you an idea where those 17 different settings should be set, that really, really helps. So, thanks for that. Thanks for that tip. Um, another thing is we were talking a little bit about microphones and uh, thinking outside the box a little bit. And, and this, and this year, I don't want another large diaphragm studio condenser mic. I don't want another shotgun mic to play around with. I want to start playing around with or experimenting with handheld vocal mics. Mics that you guys are thinking of as for karaoke or Celine Dioning or stage performance. But I'll tell you, there are some super high quality handheld vocal microphones that could absolutely double as studio mics. And one of them I would consider checking out which again, I haven't tried myself, but based on everything I've read, the specs, everything could be an incredibly great choice is the Sennheiser E965. This looks like your standard handheld vocal mic, like an SM58 or something. It doesn't look 
at face value like anything special, but inside, there's a lot going on. First of all, it's a one inch diaphragm condenser. It's a dual diaphragm, meaning that it's got multiple patterns. So it has a cardioid mode and it has a hyper, hypercardioid mode, right? And it's switched inside the head basket. So you unthread the microphone head basket and inside is a little switch and you can choose. I'm probably gonna choose hypercardioid in most cases, right? It also is internally shock mounted. So if you do have to worry about vibration, the internal shock mount will help tremendously with that. You don't have to have a big spider suspension for the mic. And lastly, it also has a built-in pop screen, right? So that's one more thing you don't have to worry about and deal with, internally pop screened, right? So another thing that's cool about that is the pop screen, the mic is tuned for that pop screen, right? So we all know pop screens can sometimes change the sound of the mic. This mic was designed with its own pop screen. So anyway, I'm saying it's worth a checkout. It's not a cheap mic. This is a $400 mic, but if you look at what you get, in the box and what you're getting in a handheld mic that's going to handle the tortures of road travel and all that kind of stuff i'm i'm thinking it looks really compelling so you'll be hearing more about handheld mics this year because i've been thinking about it for a long time um minor rant mode back on rana claus is back firmware update <laughs> firmware update 1.27 makes the personas revelator io24 less stable Beware, stick with whatever current version you have if you have the Revelator IO24. Do not install the updates. Do not use automatic updates on your Mac or your iPad if you're using the uh, re iPad to remote control it like I am. I know I'm talking to a 1% of 1% of the audience right now. I just had to say that. Do not install the update. It sucks. Uh, moving on, the Rode NT-USB Plus microphone is fine. It, it sounds perfectly fine, but it's not ultra clean. It's self noise is kind of high. Like some of the more budget USB mics tend to have a noisy preamp circuit. It's kind of noisy, right? That noise level's a little bit high. It does have internal DSP that you can turn on or off, but, it's, but unfortunately it is literally on or off. There is no real tunability. It does have two modes of high pass filter, 75 and 150, so that's kind of nice. But everything else is either bright or flat, boomy or flat, um, overly compressed or flat. And then the gate, mm, you know how we think about gates, not great. Anyway, it's an interesting mic. We've been playing with it over on the Pro Audio Suite. Um, stay tuned for an episode coming soon on Pro Audio Suite about that mic, and you can hear it used uh, in context. Um, speaking of DSP being kind of too simple, Focusrite has had the Vocaster series out now this year. They have the Vocaster 1 and the Vocaster 2, and uh, they have onboard DSP as well. So again, what is that for? Really, it's intended for podcasting, live streaming, things like this where you want to hype up the sound real time. Like tonight, we are using a Rodecaster mixer, which has built-in processing, hyping up the sound a bit for our real-time production. Right, so the Vocaster does have that. The problem was when it came out, same thing as as the Rode. Those settings were one shot deal. They were on or off, or maybe they had two levels on or off, on low high. Now they're letting you tune all that stuff. You can actually tune how heavy duty the processing actually is. You have a lot more control over it, making it a lot more compelling to me. Now the tools that are probably useful for a voice actor are gonna be simple tools such as a high pass filter and maybe a basic, very gentle two to one compressor where you wanna allow a little bit of control over dynamic range. That's about it. All the other stuff, the treble boosts and all that other thing, don't, over, oh, don't overcook it, don't overhype it. Um, and really software controls that we have, the processing that we can do in our DAW are so much more uh, granular, so much better tuned and things like this. So just be aware of that. You know, they're not all going to um, work out beautifully. Um, moving on, one more thing on my to-do list here. Oh, another new audio interface. The SSL2 is something I have been recommending, as well as others have been recommending for a really long time. 
because of its simplicity. So along comes the SSL 12 audio interface, which throws all that out the window. So if you like the SSL sound and you like the SSL preamps, but you want to have way more complexity in terms of the routing and the mixing and being able to do, say, multi-track production and on and on and on, the SSL 12 is now available. It has four mic preamps, two headphone mixes, and a bunch of internal mixing. It, it basically has a digital on-screen version of an actual SSL mixer. So if that kind of thing blows your dress up, go check it out. $500, pretty fair price, and uh, it ain't bad at all. Just remind, I'm just going to remind you, you no longer have that beautiful one simple knob for adjusting your monitor mix when you go to these more complicated systems. They're far more complicated to operate, so keep that in mind. Anyway, there's my rundown of new tech that's come out recently that you might check out for, check out in 2023. And Dan, it's time for you to tell us what you actually should consider buying in 2023. Well, all right. So not in deference to our sponsors. You know, I mean, we are not influenced by our sponsors. We, we are not. Uh, there are things <laughs> That's that important. To reiterate. The, the thing is, is if our sponsors say you need it, yes, you can probably purchase that, but I won't tell you no. Um, microphones. Mm -hmm. Again, this is, this is my own Santa rant. <laughs> It, it's a matter of there is no microphone out there that's going to change the way you perform copy. Uh, now, I, I will qualify that because I'm, I'm using this wonderful Mojave that the folks at Mojave lent us. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, it sounds nice compared to my other mic. I can't tell if it's any different. Mm -hmm. I mean, is it? Maybe it's a little cleaner, but is an engineer on the other end of the road going to, well, that may be not a bad pun. On the other end of the, uh, <laughs> the, the of cord the um, is going to say, well, well, he's using one of those or he, that, that this person is using this. And therefore I'm going to, it doesn't work that way. Unless of course you're using a Samson C 101 or something like that. Oh, I think really Sue, is, Sue is using one of those actually, but um yeah, yeah, unless you're using a cheap USB mic or uh, a really cheap condenser mic and a really lousy interface, if you've got a good interface and a fairly good con studio condenser mic, you're going to sound pretty good. Now, are you going to sound fabulous? That's up to you. It's simply a matter of, is that the right microphone for you? I don't believe there's such a thing. I really don't, because the sound you have is the sound you have. Now, do you want to have a good microphone? Yes. But if you have a good microphone, you also have to have, George. You need somebody to tune it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you yeah. need a really, really, really quiet, quiet space. Thank Incredibly you. Incredibly well-controlled. Right. Because the space is everything, as far as I'm concerned. You know, another thing you were saying, like, you know, it's not about the specific microphone. The best voice microphones work well on anyone because they're not accentuating or attenuating much of anything. You know, they're pretty dead to rights, accurate, pleasing, clean. That's what we want, right? A mic right. that doesn't distort. A mic that captures you as you are, right? Right, exactly. That's what we're looking for. A lot of microphones can do this and do it really, really well. Um, if you go on a set, the, the, the sound mixer isn't pulling out a different shotgun mic because... There's a woman on set, right? <laughs> They're not picking the mic. He goes to his on, 416 and that's... Right, or whatever the new the mic thing. is du jour, right? Right. right. They're going to use the mic that works best for the environment, for the size of the room, for the number of people speaking. They are not picking a mic out because it works better on a female or a male, for example, right? Exactly. So picking mics based on that criteria doesn't always steer you in the right direction. Right. So what else would you might, might want to buy? Depending on what interface you have. If your uh, interface is kind of tired, how do you know if it's tired, Dan? Uh, it it starts to, to crackle when you start playing with there the knobs. Uh, you know, perhaps, you know, the software, you know, the firmware in it doesn't keep up with the OS. Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. Um, but if you want a new interface, you don't have, still have to don't, don't have to go hog wild and spend $500 on an interface. Right. So much of this has to do with the functionality and the utility 
of the of the device. Right. How well does it do what you need it to do, which is capture your voice with proper modulation? That's its job, and without any distortion or anything like that. All of the good interfaces over $150 are going to do just fine. Now, yeah. what happens is, is you go into some of these other ones, like like the Apollo Twin and some of these other universal things, it's like, oh, you got all these plugins. Well, you know, we think about all these plugins. <laughs> so, you know. However, I must say, I really like that AI one from Rode. Do you like it because of its just size or it's, it's size complex, simplicity or, or lack of complexity you, you hook it up with an nt1 when you're setting up somebody's studio who has never done it before and it's like okay hit record and you're going yeah and that's and i think that to me that's 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 really i important. think you need tech that doesn't get in your way exactly exactly you and know, that's if you came from radio okay you're used to a thousand blinking lights switches and levers right if you came from any kind of other field, if you came from acting, if you came from on stage, whatever, that's all distraction. You're going to have so much harder of a time getting a great sounding product when you have all those things getting in your way, guys. We really want to emphasize that. It is not worth the distraction. Right. So please keep it simple. And if you're thinking about buying something, bounce it off of us. Yeah. We'll help you steer you in the right direction before you... you you uh, split <laughs> another 150 to $500 or more uh, out of your wallet for that next new thing. Yeah. Also, I, w I would suggest, and I suggest this to a lot of people, is depending on, on your living situation, because if you have, like, you know, young children or if you can't have, you know, the sound of what you do all over your house, <laughs> uh, a pair of studio monitors is also a good investment, you know, once you start really booking some work, because they give you back exactly what you recorded, which mm -hmm. is why I like studio monitors. Mm -hmm. And I hardly ever wear headphones. The only reason you would wear headphones is, one, you don't have studio monitors and you've got to do some editing, or two, you're doing a remote session and you need to be able to hear the director on the other end. And that's when you would wear uh, headphones. But if you're going to wear headphones, have really good ones. Everybody loves those DT whatever they are is that you like. The 770 The DT Pro. You're right, from... Uh, uh, the Biodynamics. Bar they got the big, gray, round, right. fluffy ear pads. Everybody loves those. I've seen a lot of people buy those. They've gotten really popular. Yeah. It's kind of like, it's kind of like the SM7B yeah. in terms of gear, you know? Certain gear, like that microphone for podcasting, is it's like ubiquitous. It's ubiquitous. Yeah. These headphones are almost becoming that kind of level. Of, of and you know I think I think they're great for listening and monitoring, but they're not as good for voice acting. I think because they do kind of muffle the environment so much. Yeah, it's sort of unnerving and a little unnatural feeling, you know. Um, so that would be something you have to experiment with in your studio to see. You know, the thing about the speakers is just like a microphone interacts with this environment, and you have to care about your environment or your acoustics for a good sounding mic. Studio monitors are the same thing. So if you do invest in the studio monitors, make sure the space accommodates them, right? That's an important piece. Yeah. Don't put nice-sized 5-inch driver two-way speakers in your voiceover booth, for example, in your little 4x6 or 3x5 closet or smaller. They are not going to sound good, um, unfortunately, because they are going to – the low end, the bass – is going to be boosted very unnaturally, right? So you mm. need to watch out for that. Yeah. So mm. keep that in mind when switching to monitor speakers and talk to us if you have any doubt right. of whether what you're recording actually sounds like it's supposed to sound. Cool. Well, we got lots of questions coming up, and we have guests who also have questions. So let's get to those right after these important announcements. So don't go away. We'll be right back on Voice Over Body Shop. This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem, VOBS.TV. Well, Merry Christmas and uh, Merry Christmas. We are celebrating Christmas twice. Never seen that before, but then I'm old. <laughs> Go figure. Maybe we'll get double the gifts, but I kind of don't think so. I do want to thank... George Whittem and Dan Leonard and VOBS for being my friends and I'm so pleased to be able to support you guys because you certainly supported me when I started. Some people thought the Porta Booth was a crazy idea. Some people thought the VO1A microphone, a microphone designed for voiceover people was a crazy idea. But you guys didn't. You, you didn't reviews. 
Honest reviews supported me and the products, and I'm internally grateful for that. And you do a great service for everybody. So on behalf of VoiceOver Essentials, that's Warren and Terry Lee and Lon and myself, Happy New Year. Well, I'm on camera. That can only mean one thing. You're on. It's time to talk about Source <laughs> Elements. Uh, Source Elements, the creators of Source Connect, and something you'll probably be hearing a lot more about in the next coming year, or this coming year, 2023, is probably going to be... Is my mic up? Uncle Roy said turn up my mic. I don't know if it's up. Um, one thing you're probably going to want to watch out for uh, in terms of new technology coming down the pipe is Source Elements Source Nexus. And Source Nexus is already around. It's been around for quite a long time, but its functionality, its utility is increasing all the time. Stay tuned in 2023 to see what Source Nexus is going to offer the studio, not only for the production side, but for the actor side and how it makes it running audio between things in and out of their studio, in and out of their software, so much easier than it was uh, before. So that's a really cool tool coming. So stay tuned for more about Source Nexus. But the one we all been using to do those big flashy jobs that use recording studios is Source Connect. And if you want to start using it, head on over there, source-elements.com, and get that 15-day free trial so you can start experimenting with it and learning how to use it. Heck, you can even get certified if you want to, which just shows that you have a very high level of understanding of how the thing actually works in your home studio. Anyway, let's get back to your questions here right after this commercial. Thanks, Source Elements. Hey there, I'm David H. Lawrence, the 17th, and with my company, VO Heroes, and my team of coaches and my community of voiceover talent, we guide voiceover actors along their journey. And you may be watching VOBS here uh, and not nearly as far along as many of the other people who are watching. You may not even have started yet. And we actually specialize in helping you do just that. So if you're watching all the stuff going on here on VOBS and going, I have no idea what they're talking about. I don't know, but I really want to do this. I'd really like to help you. Please go to VOHeroes.com slash start. That's VOHeroes.com slash start. And you can take our Getting Started in VoiceOver class, which tells you everything you need to get started as a voice talent. And I'd love to hold your hand along the way and help you with that journey. Again, VOHeroes.com slash start. That's VOHeroes.com slash start. This is Ariana Ratner, and you're enjoying VoiceOver Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. VOBS.TV. And we are back. Hey now. Hey now. Hey now. That's your favorite way of like testing a mic. It's like, hey I now, don't know why, hey where that came from. I'm, it's a Howard hey Stern now, thing, hey but I, I don't remember how it came. Anyway, <laughs> uh, we have to remind you what it is that George and I do, which is help you with your home voiceover studios, which is a very wide ranging array of stuff. I mean, because there's so many things you have to worry about mics, acoustics, you know, your, your soundproofing. Uh, your interface, how to use that software. We get a lot of questions about software. And yeah, because they keep making more of it. That's right. And <laughs> they never stop. <laughs> and, and it keeps getting more sophisticated. And the fact of the matter is, is Oof. it shouldn't be sophisticated. So, you know, mm -hmm. but we're here to help. And if you'd like to work with us, because we're the ones that actually know how to do all this stuff, because we've been doing it a long time. And the more we do it, the better we've gotten at it. So everybody mm -hmm. else is five years behind us. They're okay. They're good. They'll figure it out. I'm insulting a couple of people who are in the waiting room right now, but that's, that's okay. Um, if you want to work with us, there's a couple of places you can go. One, you can talk to George the Tech at... George the dot tech. Yeah, is. that's the website. Um, I'm not going to say anything about the new one because it's still not ready. But uh, the new website... <laughs> <laughs> but when it is ready, boy, I'm, I'm so excited. Anyway, the new, the current website, you can book our services over there. There's a whole menu of things from starting off with a sound check, which is really where you need to start. If I don't know what I should do next. Is my studio sounding the way it's supposed to sound? Sound check. Um, that's where to start. I will give you my two cents about what I'm hearing and tell you how it can be improved. Um, and if it doesn't need any improvement, I'll tell you that too. So that's it. 
georgethe.tech. You can book on site, you can book remotes, any kind of support you need is all in one place. Dan, he does a lot of the same stuff over his own home on the web, and that is homevoiceoverstudio.com. Right Go there. on over there because I've got my specimen collection cup there, and you can send me a sample of your audio. Just make sure it's raw, no processing, no editing, all that kind of stuff. I get it because I have to preface that because people are like, oh, I want to show you all the processing I do. I'm like, don't do that. <laughs> Um, I know as soon as we hear that, we're going to tell you, can you send us the other clip we actually asked for yeah. without all the process? We want to hear the basic sound of what's going on in your home studio right. without all the manipulation and stuff. Because chances are, we find that when people try to do that, they mess it up and they make it sound a lot worse. They may think it sounds better to them, but then again, you don't hire you. Mm -hmm. So I will instruct you on how to make sure that it's sounding right. Um, you talk to me. I, I keep finding that when I when I work with people, it ends up talking a lot more about the voiceover industry and the resources yeah. that you have out there mm -hmm. and how to be a better voice actor. Because I'll get your your studio up and running the way it's supposed to pretty quickly, quick. and that's the most efficiency of time. Exactly, it's a very efficient way of spending your time. So check us both out because we actually know what we're doing. Uh, as opposed to a lot of stuff you'll read on Facebook and LinkedIn and all these other places where people are like, yeah, I use one of these. Fabulous. You go on and keep using that. Anyway, uh, we got a bunch of questions. We do? And because oh, okay. Jeff Holman is with us tonight and he's actually taking these questions. Plus, we have some people who are joining us on camera because they're not shy and they want to talk to us about some of their questions. But let's start off with uh, Patricia Andrea. Uh, quick question. I use Twisted Wave now, but want to start fiddling with video and VO. Mm. Fiddling with v video and VO. Mm -hmm. Which program do you recommend to start? Mm -hmm. for, vo for video? Well, I mean, the question is, what kind of video? Well, yeah. Um, I don't mean what what <laughs> what are you Wait, watching? We're, not, not, we're talking content. <laughs> right, not no, content. Right. But I mean, are you doing uh, editing to picture? Are you dubbing your voice to pre-recorded video? Um, what kind of, cause was crystal, cause Twisted Wave has added video in, it does, but it's primary functionality is just for editing, right? right. So if you want to take a, a long video that you want to cut down into a one and a half minute TikTok, for example, <laughs> or an Instagram, yes, you can do that in Twisted Wave. So now if you load a video into Twisted Wave and you make all those edits, you're making an edit in the video. It's they're just simple jump cuts, right? Oh, that's, but that's you, a can, great you can, you can shrink down the length of a video very, very quickly now. In Twisted Wave, it's built right in. Right. But if your job is in is to dub, uh, let's say overdub or add voice to an existing video, Adobe Audition. Adobe Audition is designed for that absolutely from the ground up. Yep. 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 Um, I know Pro Tools is the gold standard, but you don't need to go to Pro Tools to be doing that stuff. Um, Reaper you can use as well. Much steeper learning curve than Twisted Wave, dramatically so. Um, I think Adobe Audition is the kind of the Goldilocks application for that kind of stuff. All righty. Quick question. Yeah. Follow-up question. So you could bring your um, video clip into Twisted Wave, yeah. then use your audio processing stuff to take out like some lip smacks or whatever, and then export it right out of there. Yes, you could. Yeah, there's another use case for it. So if you've got a decently... Maybe do you do you do those? I do. Uh, what I do you do. call those? Uh, self tapes. Self tapes. All my auditions are self tapes, and occasionally I have heard a little lip smack in there, yeah. and I'm like, "Damn, I wish I could bring that yeah. into Twisted Wave." And you can, you no, can. can. So it, it's an add-on. So it's the first time he's really offered an additional feature that cost extra. I think it's a fifty dollars add-on fee, but you'll see a video option on the top menu bar now, and you can then demo it for a while Fantastic. and try it out. But yeah, that's a cool idea to be able to just pull something in and do the audio fix. And, yeah. and now when you save it, the fix is saved to the video, you know, before you did need more sophis sophisticated software to do that. So cool. Very cool. Yeah. Thank right. you. That's Jeff Holman, our, our very own Jeff Holman. Sorry, he's not on camera. I forgot yeah. to turn the camera yeah, towards Jeff. Right. I will next but time. But he is there. All right. Hey, let's go. There, there he is. There he is. There he is. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's go to somebody who's actually got their camera. Uh, so let's go to uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan. You're on the air. Hey, how's it going? Good. What's your question? Uh, do you guys do uh, RMS normalization, like Nugen, uh, LM Correct? Is that a 
thing that you would recommend in a process to people who are on cheaper audio interfaces and recording systems to to meet these uh, kind of requirements? What, what requirements specifically? Would yeah. you, are like, you let's implying? say they need a, they want the audio at minus 18 RMS with a, you know, a, a true peak of minus three, you know, using mm -hmm. new gen uh, LM correct, you can um, just do that instantly. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So minus 18 RMS for, I guess that'd be something for an audiobook. Is that, would, would that be an example of what? It would have that kind of a spec? Yeah, you know, audiobooks have those specs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, if they if it automates the process for you and makes it easy and doesn't make it sound crappy, then it would be a yes in my book. <laughs> like awesome. uh, Adobe Audition has match, uh, match loudness, so it lets you set an exact peak that you want to achieve as well as an average volume. Um, so that's the kind of thing you're talking about. So whether that's done in a standalone plugin, if it's whether it's done as a, a function of the DAW, like in again Adobe Auditions match loudness. Um, there's also well, RX in Twisted has, Wave uh, that capability. In Twisted Wave, they have RMS normalization. I would yep. say it's not as uh, accurate as the new gen products. Well, the, the thing about normalization is normalization it cannot fix a dynamic range problem, right? You can't normalize to minus 18 and peaks of minus three at the same time. You have to pick one, right? Unless well, that's the software- That's just it. I think with, with Nugent, I think you can do exactly that. Right. Well, they're calling it normalization, but that's not that's the right not, term. That's more compression than normalization. Yeah, that means it's actually incorporating compression and dynamics controls as well. So while they might call it normalizing, they've kind of co-opted the studio term normalization to apply it to to imply that it means something that it doesn't actually mean really you can only normalize to one thing you can either normalize it to a peak or you can normalize it to an average but if you're normalizing to both then it is doing some dynamics tweaking which is really useful like it's a huge time saver for me in my own workflow especially with this run and gun type of printer vo send it off like i i have found that the LM correct is is saved me in a lot of workflows. That's awesome. Does right. it is it done real time or after you're done? Like in post, you just hit a button and it does it. It's like uh, you hit a button. It's like an app on your desktop, and you just take your files after and then load it right into LM. Oh, oh, gotcha. It's kind of like a drag and drop tool. Or just it's my back it's out. the last thing I usually do when before I send something off. Okay, cool. Yeah, man. I haven't used that one before. It sounds like Levelator. I was going to say Levelator or Cupcake. Yeah, or Audio Cupcake. Guys. There's a couple. It's not cheap. It, it's like $600. Oh, is, 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 it, is it worth it for that? That's well, that's the question. Man. I think it is. I think it is in this run and gun type of uh, deliverables. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. I mean, if it fits your workflow and your budget, go for it. There's there's just much less expensive tools that can do the, the same thing, including... Like I was uh, saying, Isotope Twisted Wave. RX. Twi Twisted Wave's RMS normalization is really, they're the only guys really doing it. Well, yeah, like, well, like I was saying earlier, there's la match loudness in Adobe Audition, which does it beautifully. And also Isotope RX Editor has a level control as well, works exactly the same way. You set the peak, you set the average, and it does the rest for you. So I think it's based the on the, the crest factor with the Isotope. You yeah, I'm not the sure the technicality factor. behind whether it's using Crest Factor or what, but the end result seems to work really, really well. I, I don't use it all on its own. I use it with a conjunction with a lot of other plugins before I use that to make sure that sounds great. So I don't take something that sounds mediocre and then make something mediocre sound much louder. <laughs> that always sounds worse, um, but that's the tricky part. Yeah. But thanks for the new tip. And one more question with noise floor. Uh, what's the lowest do you think when you're doing deliverables that you should be like nothing below 100. Our, our, well, you know, if it's below 100, it, it, it's silence. Yeah. I mean, once you get past minus right. 60, it's not, a, it's not an issue. I tend to find that we have a standard of minus 60 for a noise floor. Any engineer is going to take that and think that's fabulous because if it's something they need to clean up, it gives them enough headroom and enough room to, to do things, uh, seamlessly. So. I would, you know, if you're going to, if you're trying to get like a zero noise floor, it's not necessary. 
And I'm sure yeah. some of the exp- other experts we have on right now will probably either agree with us or go, you know, you well, guys are full of baloney. It's, well, are you <laughs> producing or are you voice acting in this context, George? Uh, both. Let's say it's like meditation. I feel like with meditation kind of VOs mm-hmm. that you need that total silence. Uh, that, well, that's that's a very specific genre in which you're talking yeah, yeah. about. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the point. It is very genre specific. Certain things, they may like a very quiet or, or completely absent noise floor. Other things, they may want a normal or sort of what we call a, a room tone, like an audiobook production. They want a consistent room tone. They don't want a, a very, very low noise floor. or a Right, ACX would floor. fail you. Yeah, if they'll you're, kick it out if it's yeah, too low. Exactly. But, if very, it, very but 100 is the, kind of their cutoff with ACX. Yeah, which is arbitrary. Right. You know, once it's below, say, minus 80 or something, you cannot hear whether there's noise there or not. Yeah. Because that noise is so quiet, it's below the monitoring of your own setup, the self-noise of your headphone amp, the self-noise of your speakers, the room tone of your room, all that stuff, right? Yeah. You're not going to hear that yeah. that really low noise. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, man. We love good all questions. Right. Mike Cunningham, you have a question. Yeah. Go for um, it. So I have been running into an issue uh, while I'm doing some li- live ADR stuff where occasionally, maybe once or twice a session, uh, they'll tell me they're getting like a, an electrical impulse interference on their end. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of like a, uh, just a static electrical sound that'll come through. Mm-hmm. Audio is clear all the time regardless. Until that happens, it lasts about a second, goes away. Uh, I've only ever heard it one time. I never hear it in my monitor. I've heard it one time while I was recording something here, but it's super infrequent, and I've not been able to kind of pinpoint it. I've replaced every cable I have, I've replaced the uh, dock that I'm using on the uh, MacBook. I've moved all of the power cables and stuff away from every microphone cable. Um, you know, to the best of my ability, this is not the most spacious of spaces. Right. Um, I'm wondering if it might just be my interface. Uh, I'm running a Motu M2, and uh, if yeah. if you think Good it may unit. be the interface, what should I replace it with? You know, it it could be it could be a lot of different things, but generally. If it's crackles and stuff like that, it's not cables unless you're moving your microphone. Once something's yeah. stationary, it's not going to be an issue. Uh, can a can an interface go start to go bad? Sometimes the, the the dials and stuff like that will wear out if you're using those a whole lot, or don't use it much very much at all and keep it at the same level, and then you twist it. You know who knows what could get on there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but um, generally, something like that is probably something. It may be something external, like your actual electrical system in your house in which case i would say get a a, you know a line filter okay you know which which might solve the problem yeah power conditioner you know the the cheap ones under under a hundred dollars are pretty much useless the ones that actually seem to work you know there seems to be a price threshold of around 200 bucks where they start to really actually have proper power filtration and power regulation and things like that so you know your mileage may vary always buy it with the return policy in mind because you never know if they're actually going to help or a lot of people throwing out their entertainment systems tend to throw out their monster cable power conditioners and those work just fine that's a good Mm -hmm. point you know so you pick one up for 25 bucks as opposed to 175 or something like Mm -hmm. that yeah you got to make sure it has power filtration a lot of them have you know lots of buzzwords but if they don't have a actual line conditioning power filtration they're not going to probably help but those are the worst issues when they're so infrequent and so random yeah it, it'll happen maybe once or twice over the course of two hours three hours or something like that and you know like i said everything sounds fine or at least to me it sounds fine i don't know i'm gonna have uncle roy tell me how terrible everything is in a couple of weeks but <laughs> uh <laughs> um yeah, I, I've been trying to lock it down for a while, and I, you know, like I said, every single little piece of everything that I could change out, uh, even the, I bought a brand new Mojave cable from them just to try and rule that out too. It's not the cable, I don't. Yeah, think. Okay. I don't think so. Not when it's super random. Yeah, not when it's super random. It sounds like RFI, some pulse of radio interference from um, an, uh, something either in the building or outside the building that's just sneaking in to the electrical signal somewhere along the way. So, yeah. uh, you know, at the end of the day, if, if it's if it's so frequent that it slows down production, that's one thing. 
if it's so infrequent that you can very quickly remove it with auto heal or some right. other tool yeah. or a, something like that, then it may not be worth you, the time and expense to. to yeah. Usually it. it's, it's enough that it like, I have to re-record that line. I mean, it's not a huge deal, but I'm wondering if it's, you know, uh, if, if I don't happen to catch it and submit it, that's going to be an issue too, you know? Yeah. Yep. Well, that's, that's right. Listen to your stuff carefully before you send it out. Yeah. That's yeah. Really important. All right, Mike, thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. All right. Should we go to the chat room now? We've we got a go, few from the chat room. We've got a couple. Room. Yeah, we've got one from Brendan McCoy, who's on YouTube, says, which new interface with onboard DSP would be on your Christmas wish list? Epigee Boom or the Lewitt Connect 6 or something else entirely? Love your show, guys. Thanks, Brendan. Hmm. Um, well, d which ones have onboard DSP? Well, we know... The Yamaha, the AG03, and the AG. Yeah, that's kind of the OG, right? And I, really I'm glad is. you mentioned that one. I forgot all about that one. Yeah. But they have a new edition of the AG03 series. I can't remember if it's called the just the Mark II or the II or whatever. Right. But they have a new edition, which you know supposedly has cleaner preamps and and it's got some basic processing built in, which is really cool. And it's gonna be front end processing. It as will be front-end processing. That. You know, the thing is, I like that it has a single on and off button that will turn that feature on and off. It's right. very obvious whether you're using it or not because it has a button that lights up when you press it, right? right. And that, that I kind of like. And you can just simply dial that processing in and do one job, and that could just be a high-pass filter, right? You can dial in exactly the frequency you want, have that turned on, and that's all it does. Or if you are doing podcast production, more compression, more of everything based on what you're actually doing. So that's a great option. I mentioned the Vocaster 2 by Focusrite. That has DSP with more controls now, thankfully. They've made it more flexible. Um, the Connect 6, we're, I'm actually even talking to our, our buddy Jim Edgar, who was here earlier tonight. He is, in, he is in the process of kind of putting it through the mill right now. He right. is There he is right there. It. Jim, tell Jim's us about tell, it. you said, I'm not ready to share a lot, but I know he's t testing um, it in real Yeah, real well, world. it's the, the, the thing that's popped up with it is that the drivers on Mac OS are very limited. And yeah. so that would be sort of okay. But one of the problems that I've run into, I was playing with it in a Zoom session, and I wanted to play some background sound and realized that I had no way to mute a secondary source going through it, even though I had the the mix or the, uh, the channel all the way turned down and it was taken out of the main feeds. There's an A and B mix that I should be able to put it in and out of. This is yeah. getting super nerdy, super fast. I apologize. But um, <laughs> <laughs> the uh, what you would think is that you'd be able to cut off a secondary source and you cannot. Everything gets pushed out and you have no control over what's going out to an app on Mac OS. So, for example, you and I use the, uh, the Revelator a lot and you've got, you know, essentially three in and out pairs going to anything. Uh, you've got the mix A, mix B and the regular one. You don't have any control over kind of the regular one, everything gets pushed into it. So if you're feeding up to a phone, it's good because you can select certain outputs, but if you're feeding, using it more as we would in VO, uh, you're gonna run into strange things being included with your signal. And that will be exciting depending on when it happens. So. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm putting together, I'll, I'll have a, I should have a video out in the next week or so. Uh, I've got some, some samples of what I just poorly described verbally. So hopefully I'll let you know yeah. when that's out. That's over at Ask Jim VO, right? Uh, just ask Jim VO dot studio. Just ask because Jim the VO. cool kids got all the dot tech URLs. So <laughs> you, the one that confuses people endlessly. Yes. Yes. Right. yes. Um, yeah, we look forward to hearing about that. Thanks for thanks for taking the bullet on that and keeping me from buying it and doing all that. I, <laughs> just, I really just one of the many that. services we offer. You know, I'm happy to happy to do that. <laughs> thanks for <laughs> thanks for that, Jim. Be well. All right. Let's go to another question here, because this is an interesting one from, from Grace Newton. Uh, she says, uh, I accepted the opportunity to host a podcast. Great. Lots of fun. I have a producer, sponsors, and guests lined up. Wow. That's, mm -hmm. that's all the hard stuff right there. My next step is choosing a hosting provider. Can you talk a little bit about what that is, and are there some top ones you recommend? Well, we're with Podbean. Pod, Podbean which boy made it super simple i mean i've had other people that have that wanted to start a, a podcast and i'm like well where do you go well let's just set you up an account on podbean 
you know, because you're not going to start off with a hundred thousand, you know, listeners. Yeah, the starter is free, right? Yeah, to get started. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and uh, you know, and as the show starts to pick up steam, you buy a better plan on or you know, or you upgrade to their pro plan or something, and then you have all sorts of stuff you can use. Yeah, the key is the tool set they give you for promoting the show. The fact that they yeah. help you. Um, uh, syndicate it right, right. so when you over. when you do the show on podbean they're going to put it everywhere right. like it's going to be on spotify if you choose right right it doesn't have to go on spotify but you can choose to put it on spotify um I, this is a topic i could talk about for a long time because the thing about once your podcast ends up in an aggregator or or a place that is a rebroadcaster of your show um uh, pod really the big the big one is spotify right that's the right that's the big dog, right? Once that podcast ends up in Spotify and your listeners are listening to you on Spotify, your Podbean console, which tells you your metrics, how many people are listening, how many, how, how many episodes have they downloaded, et cetera, will not know the, who the listeners are or how many have listened when they're on Spotify because they're now behind this invisible barrier that is Spotify, right? Sorry, buddy. So that's that's the problem with Spotify. So the the pro is it gets more listeners. The cons are you won't know who they are or where they're listening from, or really you, they won't be adding to your listener pool that you can use to help monetize the show. Right. So, um, but Podbean is an excellent excellent. It's been around forever. We've been using it since pretty much the very very beginning. Pretty, yeah, I think literally the very beginning. So, yeah. Right. So it stood the test of time, which I think means a lot. Um, and. I wouldn't wow. use any provider that says completely free service. The reason why it's completely free, the free ones, and Sue, oh, I'm glad Sue came on because she knows a lot about podcasting. The reason the truly free ones are free are because the company is making ad dollars. They're making money on the back of your show, right? Instead of you. So keep that in mind. Sue, you know so um, much another, about this. Another really good one that I've used is um, Lipson. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they have a really good back end also. Um, but make sure you register your RSS with um, Chartable. So that Ooh. will give you some insight every week. That one, are, we, are we doing that, Sue? Are we, doing, are we using Chartable? No, you guys are not. Um, we should be. Yeah, yeah so, um, and Grace, if you want to chat with me offline about this, I know, I know like way too much podcast um, that I can't just like, say all right now but um, I certainly tell her how to get a hold of you yeah so, tell us everybody um, yeah i'll put up my cool but just yeah i have a list of things where you want to register your rs feed and where you can just kind of do some back end. it's going out wherever it needs to be going Lipson does a really good job with that. It's a little more pricey, uh, but Podbean, I have one that does really well on there. I get enough info, but um, Lipson. I just cool. Put and I'll, put my, I'll, I'll throw my. Okay. Thank Thanks, you. Sue. That's our director. Gerard, I think, has one thing. He's he's kind of giving us little cute gestures of sadness because <laughs> he's not on the show right now. But now here oh. he is. Well, hi guys. Yeah, I've I've. I've stayed with it the whole time moved from eating my dinner to my couch with my dog now i'm in my new studio ah cool. lovely man yeah how's, how's it going sound? in there how's it sound you're in i should put my headphones on yes well i i well and i'm listening on a little earpiece All right, let me take a listen yeah well how does it sound does it sound okay I, I this is new i'm back in silver lake by the way i've moved from um full-time in sedona to full-time in silver lake but i've still mm -hmm. got the sedona house george and you're still invited Oh my gosh! Thank you for I, reminding I me. Did you forget really about that? It. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, I forgot about that. Which shame on okay. me. Okay, <laughs> um, but uh, so uh, so tell us about what you're using in this home studio. Okay, yeah. Well, I just tried a new setup, and it, uh, I was and I asked that question: is why do you hate Apogee? Because years I've been using the Apogee Duet Two, which is a very nice piece. You know, it's very nice. Yeah, but mm -hmm. you you guys, whenever you talk about um, you know interfaces, Apogee hardly ever comes up except when you did the text uh, the test when you had the apogee one which outperformed everything else it did um, yeah. um but you 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 seem to dislike apogee two and i don't mm -hmm. know why 
or Apogee and the new products, and the new Apogee Boom stinks too. Oh, I um, hate that. I agree. <laughs> well, you know, Apogee errs on the side of perfectionism when it comes to sound quality, right? And right. that's not a bad thing, right? The sound quality in general, until the Boom came out, was excellent from their products. If right. you want to know what I'm talking about, type into Google or YouTube. Type in Julian Krauss Apogee Boom. And just watch mm -hmm. that, okay? I don't right. need to get into it, right? But um, uh, but the problem I've had with Apogee products is even though they were developed from the ground up to be native running on Mac OS, Mac, right. they seem to have support issues that come up when Mac decides to update systems, right? And yep. there's this instability that comes along with it that kind of doesn't really seem to jive or make a lot of sense. Um, yeah, I've also the old thing, the, ma the, the Maestro controller was was fine. I mean, you could use it. They've got a new one now with the new uh, OS, which is a pain in the butt. I mean, it's far more, um, you know, complicated, but very good for right. music studio. But for me, it's a little right. bit too complicated. So I mean, just to cut the story short a little bit, and you can tell me why you don't like it. And I think it's probably got something to do with the dongle. Um, but what I've done now is that I've got a, a, a very nice, um, uh, a golden age pre-73 going into a Focusrite 1 mm. and bypassing the Focusrite 1 preamp and now just going straight into the, um, you know, into the, in, into the uh, interface. Mm. Yeah, that works. I mean, are you are using the, uh, you said you're using, wait, which, in, which interface are you using? Uh, Focusrite. The Focusrite the Solo Scarlet. 1. Scarlet. Oh, Scarlet, yeah. the red one. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in that case, what you're doing is you're going through the preamp of the Scarlet, but just attenuating the input. So you're turning it all the way down. Turning it off, plugging, basically. You're plugging into the TRRS connection or the tip ring sleeve connection, right? On the, uh, on the no, I think that's where I might have made a mistake. I've actually put a mic cable into the input uh, on the um, uh, Golden Age Pre, but I mm -hmm. believe I should be using a TRS cable instead. Well, it, it doesn't matter that much with the Scarlet because either way, it's still going through the preamp circuit. You're just turning the gain all the way down to mm -hmm. attenuate or pad the input gain as low as possible. Right. Um, and that, it's fine as long as you don't hear the noise from the Scarlet preamp itself on the signal. In other words, hiss. Then no, you're I don't hear any shape. hiss. And, and the Golden Age Pre is, you know, sort of a Neve clone. That's a 73 clone. Exactly, and, it, uh, and when I use the uh, four one six, it seems to, seems to take the you know harshness of the s's <laughs> of the four one six. But at the moment, I'm right. using the uh, the Neumann. Right, exactly. Yeah. So you, when you when you couple a four sixteen with a with an, a Neve derived preamp, it's a pretty good combination because it does mm. calm it down. Versus like the SSL four K button, which is what is on the SSL two, which does the opposite. <laughs> It right. boosts it way up and try, adds more <laughs> trouble, which is not yeah. what you want. So yeah. Uh, anyway, but yeah, the reason is Apogee support an uh, instability, their their weird proprietary dongle breakout cable thing. Yeah. All those I've things. I've had to replace kind of that just, about three times. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that stuff. That's the stuff that's made them kind of irritating for my users, and I've, why I've had a little trouble with them. I was hoping right. the boom because it got got rid of the dongle thing was going to be an improvement. We'll see if they can revamp it and get it clean. But uh, anyway. That's no, my, they that's need to why. bite the bullet and get something that's inbuilt, I think, you know, rather than using dongles. It's a silly thing. Right. That's yeah. what the Apogee boom is. It's There's no more mm. breakout cable, right? Yeah. So yeah. Those things break. Right. That's because you're constantly moving. <laughs> but but my little um, Silverleg thing, I've redone it all now. Um, I've got a very big closet here, and I've built these nice um, uh, fiberglass, um, you know, um, what are they? Baffles. They're, they're, yeah. Baffles. Absorbers. You know, I put them all around here and put, you know, my... Uh, you know the blankets it doesn't that, sound echoey at all so. no it sounds good no i think it's, it's it's very flat i think uh, i don't know whether it's too flat though that's all but i've got the door open at the moment because the dog's out there but yeah, uh, you're pretty I close far the from the mic and it still sounds pretty yeah. flat considering yeah what, if i get a bit door. closer to the mic you'll get an idea it's sort of you know i'm, I'm sort sounds of almost up. now to mm -hmm. the 103 yeah okay yeah. good nice glad job. to hear it all right yeah. okay all right thanks good for me all right all right well it's the time of the day. It, it's past that time of the day. <laughs> it is. But we appreciate all your questions tonight. And, uh, you know, if you've got a question for us, you can always throw it in the chat room during the show. But we like getting them if you write to the guys, the guys at VOBS.TV. And uh, that way we, you'll have priority. If you write your question in, your question goes to the front of the line. Mm -hmm. It's going to be the first ones we read at the top of the show. Right. 
So, but you have to watch the show in order to get the answer. So, uh, that that's that's the important thing is if you can write a question in, if you've got a problem like during the week, send us an email and we will include that question on the show. All right, we're going to take a quick break and then we're going to clean things up here at our party, and uh, we'll be right back. So, do not go away just yet. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on the Voiceover Body Shop. In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, Their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, voiceactorwebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. There's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is VoiceOverExtra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products, and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. VoiceOver Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources, and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, home studio setup, and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. You're still watching VOBS? (laughs) All right. Let's make 2023 a great year. Ah, oh, yes. I don't know how stress. we personally do that, but we'll figure out something. Um, so, anyway. This was fun. Thank you, everybody that joined in. Yeah. Braved, braved the uh, live liveness of the show, brought your questions in. We really, really appreciate it. Yeah. The show thrives on your interaction. And that's why, we, that's why we're here. We're here to serve you. Uh, so, anyway, let's see here. What do we got to do? Well, we have to tell you who's going to be on next week. Kelly Mozinski is going to be here from The Voicecaster over on Burbank Boulevard. Anytime we get people that are industry pros, that are casting casting people, is huge. Huge. And she she knows her stuff, and that's Mm -hmm. that's going to be really important for you to to be here for that or catch the replay. And then on January 23rd, Jason Lanier White will be with us. Awesome. A cool dude. And a Scott bunch of other people who I ran. Scott Brick said he would be joining us again. Awesome. Ran oh, cool. into him over the weekend. Oh, cool. And we're trying to get a hold of Maurice LaMarche. Please send us your regular actual email He's address. probably trapped in his closet in his boxers. That's you know? right. That's an so, old joke from a long time ago. Just type in, <laughs> type in <laughs> Ewebs and uh, his name. And, and you'll, 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 you'll talk find about it. that, yeah. Uh, okay, our donors of the week. We have many, many of them, like Robert Leadham. Stephen Chandler. Casey Clack. Jonathan Grant. Thomas Pinto. Shelly Avellino. Greg Thomas. A Doctor Voice. Uh, Antland Productions. Oh, Roy. Martha Kahn. 949 Designs. It's Lee. Lee. <laughs> Christopher Epperson. Sarah Borges. Philip Sapir. Brian Page. Patty Gibbons. Rob Ryder. Shauna Pennington Baird. Don Griffith. Jay Mosley. Diana Birdsall. Hey, Diana. And Sandra Manwiller. Manwiller. All righty. Thank hey, you. You know, guys, this is not an easy business, but George and I are here to help. If you need help with your studio and you would like to talk to me, because I'm just a lot of fun to talk to anyway, go over to homevoiceoverstudio.com. You can book uh, time there with me and, you know, or troubleshoot or any one of those things. And along with my 
what's it called? My specimen collection cup. Yes, it is. It's still called that. It and still, it still is. works. It still is. And George and it still uses audio. Nothing else, folks. Right. And you've got <laughs> stuff coming up, and you're over at. <laughs> I'm over at George the dot tech, and I am dipping my toe into. Yes, that's right. TikTok. I do have a TikTok now. It's guess what? George the tech, and uh. Uh, I try to to post. <laughs> I'm trying to do it every day, ain't happening. But two or three days a week, I'll I'll get a t quick tech tip video in over there. And the good news being that a TikTok is we keep it short over TikTok, so less than a minute and a half to get a tech tip in. So then we have the webinar coming up. By the time you see this episode, that webinar will be coming up very soon, um, January fifth. With that, when is this episode actually airing? This Dan? episode will begin airing on New Year's Day. Okay, so, so this one, yeah, later in the week. So by the time you see this, you'll have one, you'll have a few days to prepare. Head over, head over to George the tech slash webinars to sign up for the next level production and VO recording techniques for 2023 webinar. We appreciate you having you over there. All righty. Uh, we need to thank our sponsors, Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements. VOHeroes.com. VoiceActorWebsites.com. And, and WorldVoices.org. The Industry Association of Freelance Voice Talent. This is the year you got to join. We got Wobocon coming up this year. So you guys want to come down to Orlando and hang out with us there. That's right. Coming up in May. All right. Well, guys, Happy New Year, because this is on New Year's Day that you're you're probably watching this for the first time or like January 2nd or something. Let's make 2023 a great year in the voiceover business. Make sure you got all your stuff right. You got all the right equipment. You coaching you're not stopping to learn you're not stopping your learning at all you're mm -hmm. just always doing it and moving forward and that's what we want to see from you in 2023 uh but the bottom line is you know if you got your studio together if it sounds good it is good i'm dan leonard and i'm george whittem and this is voiceover body shop or vo bs tech talk 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 have a good year, everybody. See you next week. Later.